So the last video went over all of the uh, mechanistic reactions of alkenes where you need to know the mechanism and it goes through that carbocation intermediate. This video is going to go over the ones where you do not need to know the mechanism, so this is more rote memorization than it is uh, mechanistic understanding. So the first one is hydrogenation. So if you were to start with something like cyclopentene, uh, you can hydrogenate it by hitting it with H2 in palladium on carbon. Uh, palladium on carbon, that's just a carbon center with a th very thin coating of palladium around it. And it's a, it's a catalyst. It doesn't get used up in the reaction. It just speeds it up and uh, makes it possible. So uh, what happens basically is you just turn it into the alkane. You just reduce that double bond and turn it into the, the alkane. Um, one way to think about it is that if you look at the surface of that palladium, uh, and, and zoom in so that you can look at like one molecule hitting the surface, it would look something like this, where this is your uh, palladium surface down here, and then your uh, double bond is going to come in, and those hydrogens are going to be attached to the palladium surface and go up in and attach at where the double bond is, and eventually what's going to happen is that double bond will open up and you'll get both of those hydrogens on the same side so you get a uh, uh, cis cis uh, dihydro, uh, dihydrogenation uh, and end up with the product shown. Generally the solvent uh, would be ethanol and uh, another interesting thing is that you can also do this with deuterium gas instead of hydrogen gas and uh, isotopically label. So you can start with deuterium. That's supposed to be a D, sorry. Start with deuterium gas instead of hydrogen and then they will go to the double bond in the same way that the hydrogens will. And that, that addition where they're both on the same side is called uh, syn addition. Now uh, the next reaction, uh, the ne next one where you don't need to know the mechanism is dihydroxylation. And the template reaction, let's say you have cyclohexene, you can hit it with uh, osmium tetroxide, which looks kind of like this. Or actually, sorry, that was there's no hydrogens. They're all they're all double bonded. Um, but what ha what happens basically is you get this intermediate that's going to end up looking like this and then you have your that double bond opens you have both of those waters or those uh, oxygen and then eventually that osmium gets cleaved off those oxygens get protonated and you end up with a 1,2 cis diol. Now it's important the uh, the stereochemistry of both of these guys is the same. They're both uh, they're both coming out of the page. They're both on the same side, like this. Uh, the other way that you can do it. Oh, geez, what is that? The other way that you can do it is with instead of using osmium tetroxide, you can use potassium permanganate in a basic solution, KMnO4. In sodium hydroxide, and KMnO4 is a very strong oxidative agent and or oxidizer, and the NaOH just kind of weakens it a bit so that it, you're turning into an alcohol as opposed to over oxidizing it. Um, so that's that's really all you need to know for cis hydroxylation. Osmium tetroxide is the preferred way to do it, and you'll end up with a cis 1,2 diol. The next one is uh, oxidative cleavage. So a template reaction would look something like this. Once again, cyclohexene. And if you do KMnO4 in acid, so where the base in the last one reduced its oxidative potential, the acid actually heightens it. And basically the KMnO4 just goes in and completely cleaves that double bond. And you're going to end up with, I'll, I'll draw it down here, so you have... 1 carbon, 2 carbon, 3 carbon, 4 carbon, 5 carbon, 6 carbon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, off of each one, you end up with an aldehyde. 
so they get oxidized. Now, if, if say you started with something that had another carbon off of the side here, then you would, instead of one of those being a hydrogen, it would just be a ketone. You'd have that other methyl group there already. If they were both, let's, so let's say you had this, then your product would have been that, not a hydrogen, but another methyl group. And actually, so those, those ketones are right, but back when you didn't have those uh, methyl groups there, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I was thinking of uh, ozonolysis. Uh, you can, it actually turns into carboxylic acids. Those are the, the fully oxidized forms. So if they're, there, you have your six carbons that we already counted out, and then if there's no other methyl group, then you're going to get a carboxylic acid because there was just the carbon, it gets broken here, and then there's one carbon attached to it. So there was the initial carbon and the one carbon attached to it. And since carbon can have four bonds, it's going to get that ketone and also that alcohol over there. So it's going to turn into a carboxylic acid. Uh, same on both sides. So I'll just write out a couple more templates for that just to make it clear because I, I misspoke. So if our original alkene is something like this, then with KMNO4 and acid, it will go to... Uh, there's two of those. Try and make space. So you can see you just cleaved it right down the middle and replaced it with oxygens. Um, if you have something like this, and let's say that's a hydrogen, then you would go to a ketone and that acid. So you're getting both of those products. If you had something like, say, this, then you're going to two acids. So those are the same thing, they're just reflected or rotated. And the final non-mechanistic reaction is epoxidation. Uh, you can use really any uh, peroxide, but or uh, the, the one that generally is going to be used is MCPBA, which stands for metachloroperbenzoic acid. So start with this. You hit it with MCPBA, and I will draw the structure for that. That's so here is benzoic acid. So there's benzoic acid. Metachloro, the meta position we'll get into, means there's a chlorine right there. And then the fact that it's a per acid means instead of a hydrogen there, you have another oxygen. And that's a peroxide where you have that double, that double O. Um, but basically what's going to happen is you're going to end up with, that's an epoxide. So that became cyclohexene oxide via MCPBA. The, uh, the mechanism for that isn't too bad. Basically, you just have some, uh, some, some of these O's shift around. I think this one grabs that hydrogen. This one collapses down. And then uh, the two electrons here are going to go in, attach there. This one's going to come out and actually grab the oxygen so you make that triangle. It's kind of confusing but right now I wouldn't worry about it. Don't worry about the mechanism for it. Um, the interesting thing about these epoxides is that they can be ring opened. So if you remember osmium tetroxide, so if we started with this, we would go to this, make that cis dial with OSO4, but if we do uh, MCPBA, we go to that epoxide, and then if we were to hit it with, say, water, that epoxide is very ring-strained because that, that triangle is a very difficult shape. So if we hit it with water, that can actually come in, open it, attack that oxygen, and you end up with a transdial. So that product would be this. You have one going up one going down. So if you ever see transdiols, you know it's probably an epoxide opened with water, and if they're cis, it's probably cis dihydroxylation with osmium tetroxide. So those are all the mechanistic ones. We will go into some alkyne chemistry, which is, some of it is pretty similar next time. See you guys.